think smart robots will one day exterminate the human race? This is often one of the first questions I ask my students when I teach about media technology, storytelling and robots in movies. Often half of the group raise their hands. When I further ask why they come to this conclusion, they immediately start to reference to movies such as The Terminator or contemporary series like Black Mirror. Some even refer to the Matrix scenario and suggest that the robocalypse already happened. And we are unknowingly in the Matrix while our bodies are producing energy for smart robots. Isn't it sometimes impressive that stories about us, which are impossible, that we can create energy, are even thinkable for them? Well, I think there must be more to the effect of movies on us than actually pure consumption. As a passionate and a critical researcher, I investigate the impact of technology on our society at the Leiden University Center for Innovation. And I'm also a filmmaker myself, so obviously all, everything I do is about moving images, and I love it. So, and to do, today I want to explore with you on how artificially intelligent robots are shaping our vision of the future and why this matters. But first, do movies really influence on what we believe or what we fear? Please have a look at this historic clown. He's fantastic, isn't he? Well, when I ran an image search in um, 2018 about clowns, this is actually what Google threw up. Please have a closer look. Amazing, isn't it? So our digital collective image of clowns seems to have changed with Pennywise from the movie It. And probably Pennywise is not even the worst clown here on the slide. <laughs> so yes, we have empirical evidence that movies can evoke strong emotions and massive reactions in us. And today's geniuses of filmmaking certainly ride on the shoulder of amazing film giants with the fundamental knowledge and intuition on how to tell immersive stories. They can make, basically, millions of people afraid of robots. But how did robots become such a dominant part in science fiction movies? Let us delve a bit into the past for this. During the industrialization, there was big fear for technological development. There were various uprisings against automatic weaving machines most famously by the Lydis in England. So they initiated really big uprisings against them. Automatization and robots will take our jobs. Yes, sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, the thing is, some say we are experiencing right at this very moment the fourth industrial revolution. But if robots do all these very terribly boring jobs for us, why? Is our vision of them in the future often so dark and dystopian? In storytelling, basically, nothing gets the blood pumping like fear, and science fiction movies draw on this emotion a lot. And hand in hand with fear, we also have this deep fascination of the unknown. Let me give you an example for this. The Jewish character Golem can be seen as an ancestor of robots. It can be a villain or a victim. It can be a man or a woman, or both at the same time. The golem can be activated by writing truth on its forehead, Emmet. And it can be deactivated again when removing the E letter by changing the inscription from truth to death. The various other characters in history, like the Greek Talos from Hephaestus or Frankenstein or Maria from the movie Metropolis from 1927. So this cultural memory still influences contemporary characters like Dolores from Westworld. But cultural memory is not just stories. It also influences us on how we see real robots in the real world. So what exactly do movies influence us about? Let's take a look at this. Well, in a majority of narratives, after a flourishing period of peace and prosperity, future societies collapse into an end-time dystopian scenario. 
Robots, initially magical beings, relieve us from redundant work. They are here for our pleasures. But as soon as they reach a self-conscious state, they turn evil and rise against humanity. In this metamorphosis, filmmakers often make use um, of the so-called uncanny valley effect and show them very terrifying. So the basic message is, although we all first believe that robots are here for our own good, in the near future, they will actually turn against us and kill us all. So I think there may be an underlying problem there, which is, has to do with the power relation. The word robot was first coined in 1923 by Karel Chapek in his famous play RUR, Rustem's Universal Robots. The word robot comes from the Czech word robota, which means forced labor. So the story of RUR depicts a classical power relation between robots and humans, where robots are enslaved by the human masters. Many examples in art and literature depict such a power relation between robot and human which are biased by the archaic pattern we know from human-to-human -human socioeconomic patterns, the master-slave relationship. So our cruelty to each other is projected onto a technology which fundamentally differs from human intelligence, needs or motivation. Even the fantastic and philosophically deep movie Ex Machina ends in a fight. And spoiler alert, sorry for that, um, Eva, the main character, frees herself from slavery, but in this unique example, we feel that she has the right to do so. So, while modern series stretch this narration over several episodes or even seasons, the main arc often stays the same. And if we believe in the stories we've been told, a clash between robot and human is inevitable. But are we really telling the stories of a future we want to live in? If we humans create robots in our own image and enslave them, is it really so surprising that they will rise against us? But among us humans, who exactly are those creators? Maybe some, there are some in the room here, I don't know. Interestingly, movies also show another conspicuous analogy to our current tech world. Robots are often created by hashtag evil corporations. Today's questionable power of cooperation is reflected in the society of the future. Are really robots killing us, or is it maybe the hashtag late-stage capitalism? Well, okay, this negative perception of robots is not a human universal. Historically, the idea of robots originated in various methodologies around the world. But today, only few of us appreciate the souls in everything. Yet animism, considered to be one of the proto-religions of our species, would find it natural that robots are actually capable of hosting their own souls. So maybe robots are enchanted as well by the beauty of the world, we just don't know. The mechanical puppets are very close relatives from robots. For example, the karagiri ningyo. Karagiri means in Japanese, it connotates as well trick, deceive, or illusion, as these puppets imitate to be alive. Some of them were actually made to take part in tea ceremonies, so they were rather seen as helpmates, friends, or sometimes even equals. The very famous anime character, the robot Tetsuwana Dumo, had a clear impact on the real development of Japanese robots. When the, in the creation of the famous Asimo robot when they started the production, they asked, wouldn't we like to have a robot like Tetsuwa Natumo? So we have to keep in mind that science fiction stories can be really an inspiration for good as well. So while real robots are taking more responsibility across our human experience, we need to really reflect on how we're going to integrate, approach, and somehow think about them. So should we really fear AI robots or not? This is the general question out there everybody asks. Let me give you an answer from my perspective. The thing is the following. Well, the debate of killer robots has reached the United Nations level, where lethal autonomous weapon systems have become a major negotiation stream, and this is crucial, yes. 
But fear will not help us in understanding a highly complex technology. Rather, it clouds our view on it completely. You should definitely fear this animal, the very cute honey badger, because it's very aggressive. But in contrast to what movies want us to believe, neither shooting with big guns, fighting with your bare hands, or plugging out a cable will be smart strategies to deal with AI robots. So we should maybe try to avoid this. What can we do then? Well, let's start with this. Movies communicate in a different language. We need to learn how these movies work, that we can understand how, what kind of effect they have on us. So we need to learn to read movies the same way as we need to learn to analyze texts, basically. There is a subconscious influence coming from the movies we watch. It is. And our thoughts impact our actions. Hence, science fiction not only speculates about the future, but also shapes it. And we can assume there will be a day forthcoming pretty soon when we need to collectively decide on what the EU lawmakers call today electronic persons. Understanding where our fears, concerns and visions come from is therefore crucial for us as citizens of the world. So, maybe we, can, we, we can't do anything um, against the advancements of robots. It's going to happen one day. Yet we may be able to steer it into another direction than enslaved robots controlled by their human masters under the control of an evil corporation, so often told in science fiction movies. Today, AI is being developed both behind closed doors in corporations which recently gave up on not being evil and out in the open at foundations, universities and GitHub. We need to start spreading Positive and, positive and utopian stories about the future as well, where evil corporations were really overcome and decentralized. So maybe one way is really to tell more stories of a future with robots in which we really want to live in.